Well, it's another beautiful day in the park. It's Monday in Laurelhurst Park. I'm looking out at the pond today, which is all algaed over, but still really cool. And uh, the leaves are falling. We had jugglers in the park. So nothing has changed, really. I mean, apart from being a sliver of the population that would normally be in this park, but for COVID, we have a lot less. Um, but today, I'm gonna tell you a little story about how I almost got cast in Twin Peaks. I mean, almost. Hi, how are you? Um, went to an audition in Seattle to uh, for the new David Lynch TV show. That was how it was described to us. We didn't didn't know anything about it, but they were casting in Seattle, and so my agent got me in a carpool with a bunch of other actors and we made the road trip up to Seattle for this audition and uh, it's one of those what you'd call a cattle call where there were just tons and tons of people there of all different types like David Lynch really did not know what how to cast this one role pivotal role uh, was for uh, James the guy on the motorcycle and at the time I was young had long black hair but I had a, a big white stripe that naturally kind of grew out of the top of my head um, I'm told it's an Irish thing and that's me an Irish thing and we had a bunch of people in the park here so I'm gonna pause for just a moment I think we will go this way. Seems less people. So anyway, we all pile into this car and we drive up to Seattle and we get out. And they, they I'm, beginning, I'm in a room um, with like 200 people. This is like this giant empty warehouse that they're having this audition in. And uh, they made a cut, and after the first cut, they cut it down to like 50 people, and I was still in. And uh, at that point, all the rest of the people that came up to Seattle with me in the car load did not get in, so they had to wait for me. Um, they didn't have to, but they were nice enough to wait for me. And uh, this is on for uh, quite a while, and we're reading the script numerous times um, with unknown actor Sherilyn Finn who is in the scene um, some, for some reason she's doing the cattle call audition with us I don't know why that's unusual but I didn't know who she was but beautiful young lady and uh, we're doing this this same scene over and over again and they cut it down from 50 to 25 and I'm still in something I can't do right going on there <clears throat> but uh, but um, anyway uh, we had tightrope walkers jugglers in the park today I had no idea it was gonna this is a Monday October um, but they cut it down from 25 to 10 and I'm still in. Hours have gone by. We have read the script numerous times. They cut it down from 10 to 5, I'm in. From 5 to 3, I'm in. Um, and it's me. Um, the guy who got the part. He, he struggled with reading the dialogue throughout the entire audition. But he must have just looked perfectly right for the part or I couldn't figure it out. Um, because he just wasn't a very good reader. But he and uh, this 
kind of Ed Begley Jr. looking kind of guy. So like they just really did not know how to cast this part. So um, they cut it down to three. And at this point, you know, after the fourth or fifth time you read the script, just get off book. Just put the script down. You got it memorized. And uh, but all the way through, uh, the guy who got the part had script fully in his hands. Um, but uh, at one point during this, the hours have gone by, and this the woman gets on the phone, um, and she's talking to David Lynch on the phone while I'm doing the scene one more time, and she's describing me to him on the phone out loud so I can hear over the top of my my read. And she's like, well, he's got really good energy, and you know, he's got dark brown eyes, he's got this shock of white hair, it's very interesting looking. And so this is, you're trying to not let that distract you while you're, you're auditioning. And uh, she gets off the phone with me, and I was the third person she'd done that to, uh, with David Lynch. And then she gets off the phone and she says, okay, David Lynch wants to see you ride the Harley. I'm like, okay. I don't even drive a car, right? Like, getting on a Harley. Uh, should I kill myself on a Harley for a part? Yeah, probably, but I was young. And um, before I could say or do anything, the Ed Begley Jr. guy goes, I don't even know how to ride a bike. I can't, ri nowhere in the script does it say anything about a motorcycle, and he's right. None of the script said anything about a motorcycle. And, uh, she says nothing to that. She looks at me straight on. And I can't lie when somebody straight on asks me a question. <laughs> and she's like, Kevin, can you ride a Harley Davidson motorcycle? And all I could think of to say was, if you show me the button that turns it on, I can probably make it work. <laughs> and again, she says nothing to me and looks straight over to the, to the guy who got the part and said, can you ride a Harley Davidson motorcycle? And he all these, he just grunts, uh. And she walks out with him. And the two of us sat in there, and after a while had this long conversation about where in the script did it say motorcycle? If it said motorcycle, I wouldn't even come to the audition, you know. So, but the, uh, the thing was, is that an hour went by and no one ever came back. And I, at that point, I got up and looked into the hallway, and as I said, this was an empty warehouse. Um, and all of their orientation setup was, was taken down. They had left the building, and they never returned. They were just going to leave us two actors just there. Well, they did, weren't going to. That's exactly what they did. And, uh, and bottom line, I didn't get to part. Um, but... Uh, moral to this story is if they ask you to ride a Harley Davidson motorcycle you say yes, yes I can <laughs> and figure it out after that uh, but that <coughs> pardon me uh, is my story of the day